Hey everybody, welcome to Goshen Prepping. I have something serious that you must listen to, and I'm not kidding you. It literally can be, and probably will be, an existential threat that's coming our way. It can't be taken lightly. Stay to the end of the video and you'll definitely see. And you have to understand, we don't have to have a complete collapse for this to take place, but literally any type of crisis can send us into this situation. And I want you to see this. All right, first off, before we get into that, I wanna talk about some psychology terms to help you understand where this is going. And the first psychology term is called a bandwagon effect. I say this on the channel all the time. Don't jump on bandwagons. I mean, I'm the kind of person when I see a bandwagon, I run the other way or I try to disprove it, which in my opinion is kind of a healthy thing because when people just follow the crowd, the crowd gets bigger, therefore more people follow the crowd. And the next thing you know, everybody's going that way without even thinking about what's going on. The bandwagon effect is a very serious thing. And again, that's why we talk about it. It's a psychology term. It's not simply just a layman's term that people use. But the problem is this. When there's a crisis, when there's something catastrophic, not only will the bandwagon effect take place, but people will jump on that bandwagon. This is proven, by the way, going completely against, 100% against their morals, their ethics, everything they stood for, their beliefs even, even at the very beginning before the crisis are like, this is how I stand. And next thing they know, they're going completely the opposite way and unethically going on that bandwagon. It's been proven throughout history, this happens all the time. In fact, when does that bandwagon come to effect? All the time. I mean, when we talk about crises, they may not be happening all the time, but people love to jump on bandwagons. People feel more comfortable, you know, because especially if somebody doesn't research and all these people are going that way, well, obviously they must not be wrong, when often they are. And a lot of times it simply starts as a rumor. I see this in the prepping community all the time and it makes me shake my head and get frustrated. Somebody will literally just make something up put it out on their YouTube video, for example, or on their Facebook page. And next thing you know, it's all over the prepping community without any basis for that at all. It is completely unsubstantiated. And people jump on that bandwagon and say, look, it's true. All these people must be talking about it. So therefore it has to be true. It must be a fact, right? And by the way, this is how our education system is totally modeled because it's been corrupted. I mean, especially we're talking about higher education college is even worse, that they'll hire on professors who have that same belief system as they do. They see the world the same way. And because of this, those professors unified teach the students a certain schema of how things are. And it's so much that a belief system in the universities, if you go against that, then you'll have the majority of the faculty, staff, and students all saying, you must be crazy. That, that's not how things are. And therefore, the whole student body often jumps on these bandwagon, bandwagons. Even if you have a student who grew up in your house with specific beliefs or, or ethics, and they go into the university and they completely switch because of this. It, it's, it's clearly proven this is what's happening. It's not simply just a uh, you know, hyperbole. All right. But again, when it comes to the bandwagon effect, and when we talk about a crisis, keep this in mind, it is much, much much worse. It's exponentially worse that people jump, jump on these bandwagons. Okay. Here's a great example. If you don't believe me, the twin towers, maybe you've heard the twin towers went down in New York. It's a crisis that ob obviously changed all of us and changed us today. I mean, granted, there's a lot of, uh, um, executive orders put in place that changed it too. Not to talk about that specifically though, but because of this whole thing, it literally changed the way we did things that people started jumping on bandwagons. Now, of course, a lot of people jump on the bandwagons of the traditional narrative that it was terrorists that came and did this. Uh, but there's a lot of people who jumped on a bandwagon and said, no, it was the CIA. Other people jumped on a bandwagon and said, it was, oh no, it was Mossad. Other people still jumped on another bandwagon and said it was an inside operation by a government. And I'm not arguing any of these. That is certainly not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is saying that, look, because of that crisis, it caused people to jump on bandwagons and off they went. Everybody did this. And now granted, the government always has one specific scheme of schema of what they say happened. And then they look at everybody else as far as being fringe, even though they may vary as far as what they believe. Okay, that's one thing though. But again, not purpose of this video, I need you to understand another psychology term as we progress through this. It's called a threat awe, or more specifically, a threat-based awe. And you know the word awe, I'm sure you do. You know, everything is awe-inspiring. You know, you go outside at night, and especially out here in the country, there's not a light on for a long ways away. And you can see, I mean, it seems like every single star. It's simply gorgeous. It is awe-inspiring. And what does that mean? Does that mean it's gorgeous or does that mean it's beautiful? No, literally, psycholog psychologically speaking, an awe is something that takes place that literally makes you question your existence, question your worldview. You know, inside your head, you have a very specific worldview and how you view everything. 
And sometimes when you just look, look up at the stars and really gaze at them, you really kind of question, what is going on here? You know, why do we have all these stars? And are they planets? And are there alien life? And where did I come from? Where did I exist before I came to this planet? You know, all these different things come into your mind. It is awe-inspiring. But the question is, or the, the statement is, it literally goes into an aspect where you question literally everything that's going on. See how we're starting to get connected with this? So when we see a threat awe, that's even worse because not only are you in awe going, oh my gosh, what's happening here? But the threat literally takes you into a situation where now you start questioning things and saying, wow, maybe my whole worldview isn't quite the same. And 9-11 did that for a lot of people. They, they sent, us, sent them down a path where they're suddenly now, you know, not feeling so secure. And of course, the government probably orchestrated that, not getting into it, but certainly monopolized on it, didn't they? When we went into this war on terror, it literally wasn't a war on terror, but a war on our freedoms, the way things took place. Okay, that's awe. Now, awe in itself can be positive or it can be negative, but obviously a threat awe is absolutely negative. In a threat awe, you're literally looking at there's something that's a threat to your life or the way you do things, and it'll start, you start to question your reality. And ultimately, the real definition goes into you will have a sense of powerlessness. You will feel helpless because of that threat, whatever that threat is. Now, granted, and often in those situations, there's nothing you can do about it. But either way, you feel like there's nothing you can do, even though possibly you can. But you actually feel like your whole life is in jeopardy. Now, that goes into the term as existential threat, which I mentioned at the very beginning. And that particular type of threat off, that's a type of threat off, by the way, where literally it threatens your entire existence. Wow, I am going to die because of this situation. We're all going to die. And of course, that's when you get into sheer and panic modes, which you know, if you know anything about our channel at all, we don't subscribe to that. We talk about scary things, how to deal with it, how to prep but we try not to dive into the fear and let it take control of us. Instead of we need to control our surroundings so we don't let the fear take hold. Okay, secondly, besides actually having that sense of powerlessness or helpless, it also leads to increased social connections. Isn't that interesting? So the more threats you have, the more people naturally, it's human nature, will start to band together. And a lot of times it's that helplessness, you know, that neighbor of mine, I don't really like them too much. You know, they don't really cause problems, but you know, we don't get along very well. But now suddenly you're helpless, you're powerless, and they're helpless and they're powerless. Suddenly that neighbor is your best friend. You know, and often we'll see these people joining together because of this. Now, because of the existential threat is going to cause people to jump on the bandwagons, we see these threats coming through, real or not. And what happens? People will tend to jump on a bandwagon going 100% again against their beliefs their ethics, and their morals. Interesting. So when we see things happening, let's say in the United States 9-11 hits, we very well may have it. So people will let go of their beliefs and morals and ethics, join together with other, other social groups, and do things they never would have done before. That's what we see, and it's a very real thing. And by the way, this is what we see like in gangs, by the way. Often you'll have some kids who really don't have a lot of good parents that try to bring them up. That's not always the case, by the way. But they would look at the gang. The gang itself is the threat to them. Maybe it's an imposing gang. And the gang will say, you know what? You're not a threat to us if you're a part of our gang. So they'll join the gang. And by the way, when they join the gang, what do they do? They do everything that goes against, 100% against their beliefs, morals, and ethics, which is interesting because a lot of times you have kids who grew up in a very, uh, sometimes even strict ethical, moral household, whatever your moral statue is, and they'll completely against it because of these as existential threats. Okay, now here we go. Here's the purpose of this video and here's how it affects you as a prepper. This is why we have false flags, by the way. Well, not we make them, but obviously why governments make false flags because they know that it's going to send a threat awe into the situation, even specifically an as existential threat, threat awe. And when that does that, people are gonna jump on bandwagons. Now, at the same time, the government will say, oh, look, Here's all these threats that are happening. I'm the one that caused it. And because of this, you probably should jump on this bandwagon right here. I know that's going against your ethics and your morals and your belief structure, but you know what? I'm not asking you to go in full, just a little bit, go in this direction because as the government, we can help you. This is the mafia, by the way. They go to a business. Hey, business, you know what? We want to protect you. Well, protect us from what? Well, from us, of course, if you don't go with us and pay us money, we're going to destroy your business. They don't say that, but they kind of hint that way. That's what the government's doing. And because the government's doing this, 
people are jumping on those bandwagons and off they go. And the government does a very good job of trying to convince you that, you know what, this is what the majority of the population is doing when that's not the case, trying to get people to jump on their bandwagon. Okay, but it gets much worse than that. And here we go. Hear me out. When a crisis happens, we'll have people jumping on those bandwagons releasing all their beliefs and ethics and morals. And then we start seeing things like, well, sometimes it starts off as protest, goes into riots, looting, social unrest, and it gets worse and worse, burning down businesses, stealing everything in sight. And it's funny because a lot of these people, not all of them, by the way, some of them who are absolutely, that's what they're like, yeah, who are we going to go looting? But there's a lot of them who would probably say, oh, looting's terrible. And next thing they're on the five o'clock news as they're running into a store, stealing everything in sight because of these threats, because their whole world viewpoint is collapsing and they'll start jumping on bandwagons and head in that direction, even if they don't believe it, that they will. We saw that exact same thing, by the way, in pre-Nazi Germany. They had, if you didn't know, an economic collapse, a huge financial collapse where you couldn't afford anything. And because of that, it led to riots, unrest, starvation. And starvation, think about that, is something that really is a motivator for people to head down that path of basically releasing their, their beliefs and ethics and morals. Now, something's got to be causing this financial distress. Oh, it's the Jews. Because understand, that's what they said was in World War I, the reason they lost World War I partly was because of financial attributes, but the Jews caused this. It was simply just people owning banks and because of the financial distress, as Germany was going down, a lot of the Jewish groups in the area actually stayed pretty wealthy because they didn't really jump on the bandwagons and head down these paths and they actually had investments and stuff. So, oh, it's the Jews, it's the Jews causing all this. And that was one of the main platforms that the Nazis propagated, that it was the Jews who did this. And because of this, well, obviously we know what happened. But pre-Nazi Germany, understand that you'd have five houses on the street, one of those houses would be, would be a Jewish family, and all five families would be neighbors. You know, they would go to barbecues together, hang out together. You know, their kids would play together. All these things would happen. And the Jews in the area were simply just another family per se, different religion, obviously, but a different family. And that was all well and good until now suddenly this existential threat, the Jews have caused Germany to collapse. They became the scapegoat per se, and the whole country turned against the Jews. So even though these people grew up together, the family next door, they were best friends prior to Nazi Germany, but now that's the same family turning them in. They did it in a heartbeat. They were happy to turn them into the government. And of course, the rest is history as the Jews went off to the Holocaust into uh, obviously trying to erase them from history. Okay, so here we go. This is how it affects us. As preppers, this whole idea system is our greatest challenge. We literally may have like an economic collapse. We may have an EMP or a nationwide grid collapse somehow, possibly World War III. And all of these will be looked at, as far as the population goes, as an as existential threat, which is probably true, by the way. An EMP hits, we're going to be in tr big trouble for a few years. But obviously, it's not just that. People will be starving. They'll be jumping on bandwagons. And they will do things that go against their beliefs, their morals, and their ethics, especially because of the starvation. And you know what? We've already seen this, by the way, in the last three years, people jumping on bandwagons and certain little things would happen. And next thing you know, there's no toilet paper in the store, toilet paper. And they do this. There's no logical mind when it comes to a panicking human. You need to understand this. So when some kind of cri crisis does happening, that reasoning will go out the door. And now violent gangs will start to spring up everywhere. And who will be in these gangs? People who are just regular people because they'll be starving. They will invade your home. They will take your food. They will kill your family for that food. Whereas just a year before, they never would have thought of that. They could possibly even be somebody watching this channel or your neighbor next door to you right now. Their morals and beliefs will be out the window. This is historically absolutely a fact and proven. This is what happens. Now, worse yet, and think about this. Just like the Jews were blamed for everything leading to, into World War II as far as their extermination, you may be, at this point, the one that's blamed. Your neighbor, neighbor may be turning you in. Why? Well, remember, you're the cause for the climate change because you're the only one in the neighborhood who wants a gas-powered car. You're the cause for the financial troubles because you said to go ahead and stockpile certain things like food or possibly some precious metals. You're the cause for this collapse because you decided to go in against this whole system. Think about this. You're the cause of why this new outbreak's out. Why is there a new outbreak? 
because you wanted no part of it and we're, gonna, we're not going to do whatever they said needed to be done to try to stop it. Think about this. This is an ex existential threat that is coming and next thing you know, you're going to find yourself just because you're a prepper that you're the cause for this existential threat.